Toby Watt for TST Boxing and IFL TV in association with Epicenter.tv. I'm joined by George Ferocious Cambosis here in Brisbane. How you doing, mate? I'm good. Uh, just wrapped up uh, sparring with many, so just chilling out for the night. That was it, the last last few rounds today from, from camp. So, so you were obviously Manny's main sparring partner during this. So talk me through yeah, how many rounds you've been doing, how the rounds gone, and, and how how's that been for yourself? So we, we ended up doing, uh, my stuff I've done 45 rounds with Manny, as his main sparring partner. Um, today we've done four to wrap it up. We pushed very hard. We pushed very hard together. Um, I pushed him, he pushed me, and uh, we pretty much fought five with five, two fast guys, um, an 11 time world champion, an all time grade of boxing, you know, to push me to another level. Um, you know, I gave him the best possible work as a young, hungry 24 year old kid coming up in the rankings. Um, similar to, to Jeff, how, how he's so hungry to um, to get this victory. That's what Manny's seen in me in camp, and that's what I wanted to push him in camp, to show him that this this kid like Paul is going to come in, come in real hungry, and I want to show him that as well. From my end. Um, it's a great camp, really good camp. We put in the work, we put in the road work in the morning, um, put in the rounds, inspiring, and uh, Manny's ready to go 100. percent And how um, how does say so seeing Manny's camp and how he prepares? How will that change your preparations going forward? Are there little things that you've picked up in there? Yeah, 100%. A lot of little things I picked up from from Manny. You know, he's, he's an all-time great. So there's obviously something he's doing that's that's, that's working and, and made him uh, boxing royalty. There's a lot of little things I picked up that I'm going to add to my camps. Uh, obviously, just the fortune of Freddie Roach are my, my coaches now, and um, we've got some big plans with, with them too. As well as Manny is going to be in the picture for my future. Um, could be back at the end of September, early October, uh, do something with Manny. So he's going to be taking a lot of interest into my career because you can see how hungry and how determined I am and, and how much of uh, a big future I have as a future world champion that's coming from him. Excellent. So you two really hit it off then during this camp, by yeah. sounds of it. We come quite close, and um, you know, it's when you're pushing each other and you're trading leather every day and you're running the mountains every day and, and you, you create a good bond and you know how much work goes into it and um, I went there to, to give him the best possible work and I think he's my best possible work today. Yes, and I, I saw some reports coming out of the camp recently, I think earlier this week, that um, Manny had knocked down his other sparring partner a couple of times. So how, um, how how's he looking in there? And I know you, this is the first camp you've done with him, so you can't compare. But how is how's Manny looking? How's the power? And, and how yeah, how you see the fight going? The way I can compare is from his last couple of fights and, and his last preps from hearing from Freddie and Justin. Um, this camp has really come out and brought out the aggression. I believe I'm a big factor to that. Um, I'm an aggressive fighter, especially when I'm sparring. I'm um, fast, I can frustrate a lot of fighters, and um, you know, we were both egging each other on, you know, and, and exchanging leather and fighting fire with fire. So I, I believe I brought that into it, back into him. Uh, he did drop the Mexican twice, the reports that came out in the media, and it's true. Um, you know, the Mexican's a good kid as well, he pushed, he pushed Manny very hard. Um, and there's some reports saying that I've got some worlds on my face, but um, you can see I've got no worlds on my face. Yes, I saw you, I saw, um, saw you. So we pushed each other very hard, but um, it was great, great camp. And uh, he's going to pay dividends for him on Sunday. I believe within six he's going to knock Jeff out. That's a prediction I heard in there first. And, and so look, looking at yourself, um, you obviously had a fight uh, a couple of weeks ago which was called off. Um, uh, it's supposed to be on Saturday, so two full days ago. Yeah, yeah. so um, what, um, yeah, what, what's the plan for yourself moving forward now? You've pretty much done a full camp with Manny, so you're, I'm assuming you're in fighting shape. Pretty much I've gone from Ogilvy camp in the US to, to destroy an Ogilvy, then to um, Bala camp in the US by Beltran Ramirez, you know, the top guys in the world, Lipanets for the camp before, uh, destroyed Bala, and now I've gone straight into Manny, um, sparring with, with Manny for so many rounds, and obviously I was ready to destroy my money. It wasn't meant to be, we had visa issues, so, um, and I got, I got the first, uh, I got my baby coming, the first birth of, of my child in two weeks. Um, I'm still going to train hard and I spend time with my kid, but I'm going to train just as hard as I always do. And um, we've got some big plans, obviously, with Team Pacquiao, uh, late September, early October, um, something real big. And, and with that being the case, and this has been murmured a few times, uh, do you think we've maybe seen the last of you fighting in Australia? I believe so. I believe so. This was the Mamani fight was the last chapter. Unless something big, big is there, um, big money fight or or, or a super fight, um, we could 
talk about that down the track in the questions. Super fight happening, but um, no, I, I believe now it's time for me to venture out. You can look at my track record. I'm not worried to fight anybody. I'll fight anybody anytime. That's rated above me or what's worth my, worth my while. Um, I spar the best fighters in the world. I've been in camps sparring so many rounds with, with an all-time great. So I've got nothing else to prove to anyone or to the haters. Um, and I'm doing my thing and, and, and I'm ready to take the big fights. Anthony Crawler, another fight that I like. He's number four. Um, I'm number seven at the moment. I've only had 12 fights, but my, my maturity is, is like I've had 30 fights. Um, so I'm ready for any fight. And yeah, so I guess for those, for those guys looking sort of over their shoulders, are you chasing them down? Um, you know, like I say, with yourself only having 12 fights, you know, the mindset of Anthony Crawler might be, let's fight this guy now before he's had a bit more experience under his belt. Has there been any talks between your team and that, those, those guys in the UK about that fight happening or anything like that? Yeah, there's, there's been a couple of talks. Um, you know, we're, we're still pushing a little bit harder for, for that. Um, if, if, if Anthony Crawler looks at my record, because I only talk for now and Sydney number seven, then take it like that, because then on four night you'll see the difference. You know, I've just spent a full camp with Manny. Um, I've spent a full camp with Dorchina, Ramirez, um, all, these, all these top guys. Sergei Lipinets is going to fight for the world title now. Um, all these guys are top guys in the world, and, and I'm handing myself very, very good. Um, I'm, I'm at the top end of, of, of the late boxing right now. Yes, and, 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 how, um, and how how did you get on, one thing I meant to ask earlier, how did you get on with the weight side of things? Obviously Manny's training at welterweight, um, yeah, he was strong when he was at the lighter weights anyway, but welter has obviously been his sort of strongest weight over the last few years. So how, how did you manage his power on that side of things and how did that feel in comparison to say, the guys that you're fighting week in, you know, week, no, no in problem, week out? No problem, no um, problem. Manny, Manny and myself are probably walking around the same weight at the moment, 64. Uh, 65, he might be a little bit, probably be a little bit heavier, but I've sparred all my life the bigger guys. Um, from when I first started boxing as a young kid, I, I was training with the heavier guys, 10 to 10 kilos heavier than me. So that's no problem, I sparred all the heavy guys in America. Lipinets is a division above, Ramirez is a division above. They'll try and walk around at 70, so there's no problem sparring the bigger guys. And, um, uh, whatever fight, if there's a bigger fight up there for me, then I'll move up. Perfect, and, and so I know you mentioned, say, other fighters down the line and, and so it's all around, around well away. There's, there's been a bit of needle back and forth between yourself and, and Jeff Horn during this camp. You know, he took, took some offence to you training with Manny and, and saying not speaking to him first, and then obviously you sort of bit him back, at, and there's been a bit of back and forth there. So. And yeah, where does that stem from? Because you guys obviously, you know, I saw you talking at the press conference originally and everything seemed fairly friendly, but obviously things have changed a little bit since then. So, I mean, talk me through your side of things. You know, I've I got a way of just upsetting people, you know, upset everyone that, that um, you know, people in Australian boxing look at me as a threat. Um, they don't have to worry about me in Australian boxing because I've passed that level now. But, but Jeff, um, I know he, had, he was upset about the uh, me going to spy Manny Pacquiao. He wanted me to ring him up. You know, respect to Jeff, you know, he's, he's doing a good thing with, with, uh, with Manny and fighting Manny. Credit to him, but um, I don't know him nothing. I don't know you nothing, Jeff. Um, you don't pay my bills. I pay my own bills. Um, Manny had me over there. He was paying my bills. And you don't take up an offer. You, you don't lose an offer as far as an 11 time world champion. At the end of the day, I've done 45, 45 rounds with Manny. Jeff, you haven't done one second yet. So we'll see how well you go. And. Um, you know, at the end of the day, if he's still upset after the fight and he's still dirty at me, then um, come see me and we can sort something out. No problem, I'll move up to divisions. So moving up to well away is something no that you're problem. not against? No problem, I'll move up to... I'll get up, I'll get up to heavyweight if I'm going to take a few sessions in the gym. So if the Australian public wants it, it's a super fight. Um, you know, let's see what he does with, with Manny. Respect to him. Yeah, perfect. And uh, yeah, from a, I guess from a fan's point of view, that's that's one that I think would be an easy sell. And you very, very different personalities yourself. And well, Jeff you got and you got the good guy, the school teacher, and then you got the bad guy, the villain. So uh, it's an easy sell. One talks, one doesn't. Um, one's a good guy, one's a bad guy. Easy sell. But um, look, focus on your fight first with, with Manny, and um, Manny's fully focused on, on, on taking you out. So well. Yeah, we'll talk absolutely. down the track. Absolutely, and, and so it's a massive, it is a massive event that Jeff's headlining. And, and what do you think that, say, an event like this, 60,000 fans, a boxing event in Australia, what, what do you think that does for the sport here? It's awesome. It's awesome what it's done for the sport, um, for the guys fighting on the undercard, for the guys that are involved, like myself, Spartan Manny. Um, it's unreal. You know, the media that, that's, that's really behind it. Like I said, credit to, to Jeff and, and Duca and Manny and Team Pacquiao for, for doing this fight and giving Australian boxing 
um, you know, the fights that, that, that need to happen. I've, I've been doing it. Ogilvy, Bala, um, Jeff's obviously doing it. A lot more fighters need to do it. And they've got to stop running and stop protecting records because there's a shitload of them. Um, guys are moving up to like 20 and 0 or 10 and 0 and they're saying, hey, look at us. Or guys that are sitting in the world rankings and are for nobody. Um, time to step up and bring back Australian boxing what it has to be. Once you clean up your backyard like I've done, then you move on to, to bigger things abroad. And then if there's a super fight like me and Jeff, then you meet, then you meet down, down the track. Definitely, I think it's something that we need to see more of. And, and you know, like I say, it captures the, captures the imagination, particularly yourself and Ogilvy. I know that that was just had so much interest, sort of locally and outside of that. And um, you know, these sort of rivalries, I think, can, can build the sport That's massively. Right. They're good rivalries, and the, and the top guys are one versus two, then against me and Bala, one versus two again. Interim champion versus full champion. Um, these guys don't really talk too much. I'm the one that, that pipes the fight up. As a boxing fan, it's a good fight. Um, as an outside fan, you want to see the bad guy versus good guy, and that's what I'm creating. I'm creating attention back into Australian boxing. Um, Absolutely. And so it can make my job a lot easier as well. Well, that's right. It's easier for you to make it easier for Channel 7, Channel 9, Channel 10, um, all the networks, uh, the Telegraph, and, and all these papers. I haven't stopped on the uh, on the phone all day. I've yeah. spied many. I've been back on the phone with, with interviews and stuff. So um, it's all about getting that mainstream media. And um, you know, I think Australia needs someone like me. They need the bad guy who's not afraid to, to say it the way it is, not afraid to fight the, the best fighters out there. And um, and he's real. I'm real. Everything I say is real. I don't. I don't, I don't I don't bullshit, I don't, I don't cut around the corner. Um, right, yeah. I think that, that there's, a, there's someone missing really for the whole sort of Mundine left behind That's a right. few years ago. Mundine really. done his thing and, and you know, he talked and didn't really fight the right guys. You know, and then later on he fought some guys that, that went out and like, passed their prime. I'm happy to fight anybody. If Lenaris is there and he wants to fight, I'll fight him right now. Um, if there's anyone that, that wants to go and look at Excellent, excellent. Well, look, we look forward to seeing all of that and say the fruits of the uh, the sparring of Manny and, and how that's improved yeah. your game next time out. Um, obviously, I know you're flying back to Sydney tomorrow to be with your wife, but you'll be back up for to so go with your girlfriend. I'll be back here, back, be back with my here girlfriend to, um, to make sure she's all right. She's two weeks uh, June uh, for the first baby, so that's exciting as well. Another chapter in uh, my career, more motivation for, for me to uh, win my world title. And then I'll be back for the fight. I'll be sitting ringside. Manny's got me some ringside seats, so I'll Lovely. be sitting down and Lovely enjoying uh, all the hard work that we put in and seeing it all pay off. Perfect. Yeah. Well, we'll catch up with you then, I'm sure. Uh, until then, have a good time, mate, and uh, thanks for your time. Appreciate it, and appreciate what you're doing for Australian Boxing as well. Cheers, George. Thanks, mate.